Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. Come on in. Come on in. Hope you join us today for the teaching. Hallelujah. I tell you, everything tried to come up against Pastor Keith this morning. But I'm here. I'm determined. <laughs> you have to be determined on this journey with God. It was just so much opposition this morning. One thing after another. But God. Come on in. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Let's get ready to study the Word of God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise because he's worthy to be praised. He said many are the affliction of the righteous, but God promised that he would deliver us out of them all. And he will. He is a faithful God. There is no one like him. We serve a mighty God, Prince of Peace, Abba Father. He's the beginning. He's the end. Hallelujah. He knows the beginning. He knows the end. Time. He doesn't identify with time. And in our natural minds, we can't even comprehend it. You know, in the book, I believe it's Peter. I believe it is. Say a thousand years unto us is like a day unto the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I pray that you've had a wonderful week. Hallelujah. I know I have. I hope more will get on. We're running just a little bit behind, but we're here today. Ready to study the word of God with you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I will give him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise because he's worthy to be praised. There is no one like you, Father. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Crucify the flesh. Magnify the Holy Spirit. And glorify God. He gets all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Just raise your hands where you are and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for another day. For this is the day that you have made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what it looks like, no matter what I'm going through, God, I know that you are in control of everything because you are the Prince of Peace. I thank you for bringing me through the night, God, waking me up this morning, starting me on my way, clothing my right mind, having the activity of my hallelujah of my limbs. Lord, I thank you. Just raise your hands and thank him. Hallelujah. When you give him the praise, the honor, the glory, you forget about all the other stuff that might not be going your way. But because you know that he is in control, he's our father, prince of peace. He is our provider. He is our refuge. There is no one like him. So we're going to just honor him, praise him. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. We serve. Oh, what a mighty God. We serve, we know that angels bow before thee, heaven and earth adore thee. What a mighty God we serve, oh, what a mighty God we serve, oh, what a mighty God we serve. We know that angels bow before thee. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God 
we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. You know that angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. We serve a mighty God. Sing it along with me. We serve a mighty, mighty God. We serve a mighty God. If you didn't have any music, would you still sing to him? We serve a mighty, mighty God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God. We serve, you know that angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, blessed be the name of the Lord. I tell you, I have to give him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, because you know the enemy, he busy. He go to and fro seeking whom he may devour. Try to stop us this morning. But stop me this morning coming on. But you know I give him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. If I'm in my own place, hallelujah, no one around me but me and the Lord, are you still going to say what a mighty God we serve? I tell you, he is the Prince of Peace. I'm a father. There is no one like him. He's a good God, merciful God. Who? He said his mercies are new every morning. I praise them all by myself. Pastor Nicole, thank you for being on this morning. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Elka Kelly Richardson, thank you for being on. And Brother Eddie Fields, just go ahead and give him the honor, the praise, no matter what you're going through in your body. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are the head and not the tail. That castle trying to take over. But God tells us in his word in Isaiah 53 that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed go ahead and accept your healing claim it in the name of Jesus he said greater works we will do than he has done so we thank God hallelujah we oh glory we bless his name there is no one like him hallelujah he is prince of peace when things look blank hallelujah when we think of the goodness of Jesus and all that is done for us I soul should cry out. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for saving me. I was on my way to hell one day. But God, you just paid my my aunt or my grandmother and so and so to pray for me. And now I know what they're talking about. It's nothing like you, God. You are almighty God. Prince of peace. You will bring us through things that we can't even imagine in our mind when we don't have enough money to pay for it, when we don't have our own place, hallelujah. I'm giving you my testimony. But God, he shows up and show out. And when you're in a relationship with him, he will show you, he will speak to you. Daughter, son, it's going to be all right. But you got to know him as the good shepherd, hallelujah. He is, that's just one of his names. This name's many, we're going to talk about many of his names. Because we have many, hallelujah. But to this morning, hallelujah, we're going to talk about him as the good shepherd. Oh, Lord, Pastor Charlene, calm down. I tell you, he tried to get in the way this morning. He wanted to get in the way. But I tell you, when praises go up, hallelujah, blessings come down. This is a faith walk, y'all. Don't look at your circumstances. Just do all you can do. Because he said faith without works is dead. But when you done done all you can, can, can do, just stand in the goodness of Jesus. Keep reminding. Let the Holy Spirit bring back to your remembrance, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. What is already done for you. And when you start thinking about it, all you want to do is shout and say, Lord, I thank you. Because I know if you brought me through this, you're going to bring me through that. Hallelujah. Woo, God. Woo, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Woo, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Ha! Woo, God. Mm. I'm trying to calm down. Hallelujah. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to know, thus saith the Lord. I keep hearing it, but I better get on in the word. Woo, glory. Oh. Uh, I didn't worked up a sweat right here in my own home because it's, I have a relationship with him. See, the Bible says, fail not to assemble yourself with one another, but exalt to one another even the more as you see they approach it. Yes, we got to do it. And I look forward to it. But I tell you, can you just praise him in your home? When you think of the goodness, because you know you have a relationship. Ooh, Pastor, go on. I'm going. I'm going, but I tell you, I'm happy this morning. Because he lives on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, his spirit, ah, resides on the inside of me. And I pray in the name of Jesus that he resides on the inside of you. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless your name, Prince of Peace. Abba, Father, you are our provider. Emmanuel. Oh, God, we thank you for being the good shepherd. We thank you for being our good shepherd. We honor you. We praise you. We thank you, God. Oh, Father, you tell me in the book of Proverbs, verse 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways. I acknowledge you and you will direct thy path. Lord, I acknowledge you this morning. Hallelujah. And I need your direction. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, move past the Charlene, not the, your daughter Charlene, not the way. And take complete control of every entity of me. Lord, let this word take root in our hearts, God. And we study your word. And we follow along because we want to be a good student of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Say with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to your name, God. Oh, hallelujah. I tell you, he's a good God. He is a merciful God. I'm trying to get in it. He is the Prince of Peace. He gives us peace in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, God, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, God. Heal, set free, and deliver, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name. In the Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for your patience. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Oh, glory to oh God. As he go through the process, God. Ha, hallelujah. Continue to bless him in a mighty way, God. His wife, God, as they go through, God, in the name of Jesus, knowing that you go before us in every situation. Look over Brother Eddie, God, as he go through this new Oh, God, hallelujah. Be of good cheer. He is overcoming. You will too, God. You will too, my sisters and my brothers. You will too. Just go through it because he's with you. He go before you in every situation. 
Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. But keep kicking my shalakata. Continue to look to the hills with coming your help. Because your help coming from the Lord. Hallelujah. Who blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Glory to your name, God. The title of my message this morning, Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. The question I would like for you to ponder, are you determined to be a good sheep? I tell you, hallelujah, we all are, I believe. Are you determined to be a good sheep? The scripture reference this morning is the gospel of John, John chapter 10. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Chapter 10, verse 11 through 28 is what we'll be coming. Well, we'll go a little further than 28, but anyway, you know, the beginning of that say, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. But let me just give me a tentative ear this morning before we get in the verses. In the gospel of John, every chapter, Jesus' deity is revealed. And Jesus' true identity is emphasized through the title, titles he is given. Titles like the Word, the One and Only Son, Lamb of God, the Son of God, the True Bread, the resurrection and life, the vine. And as we know, he is also known as I am that I am. <laughs> many names, many titles. When Jesus uses this phrase, hallelujah, I am, he affirms his preexistence and eternal deity. Mm -hmm. If you agree with it, say amen or type amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Uh -huh. In chapter 6, verse 35, I am the light of the world. In chapter 8, verse 12. In chapter 9, verse 5. And in chapter 10, verse 7, he says, I am the gate and I am the good shepherd. Chapter 10, verse 11 and 14. I am the resurrection and the life. Chapter 11, verse 25. I am the way and the truth and the life. Chapter 14, verse 6. And I am the true vine. Chapter 15, verse 1. As we know, the greatest sign, of course, is a resurrection. Uh huh. And John provides a staring eyewitness account of finding the empty tomb. Then he records very, uh, uh, various post resurrection after the fact post resurrection appearances by Jesus John was a devoted follower of Jesus Christ he has given us a personal and powerful look at his beloved master the eternal son of God beloved as we study this chapter I pray that we will be compelled uh, it will compel us to commit ourselves to believe, listen to the word, because you're going to hear believe a lot as I go along, will compel us to commit ourselves in and follow the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. So verses 11 through 15 of John 10, I hope you have it now, reads as follows. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Verse 12, the hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. Uh -huh. So when he sees the wolf, he said the hired hand does not uh, 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 own the sheep. They hired. So when he sees the wolf coming, he's just a hired servant. He, 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 he doesn't carry the sheep in his heart. He just hired. He's just doing a job. How many of us are just doing a job? We say we're Christian, but we're just doing a job. We hired help. Are we gonna? Do we know the scripture that says that? Uh, how you know our role as a servant? 
Our role as a master meaning supervision position. Do we know our role? So, so, so say, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his sheep, lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So this is what happened. He said, so when he sees the wolf coming, <laughs> he abandons the sheep and runs away. He's afraid. He runs away. He's just hired. It's not rooted and grounded in his heart to do what best. Say. Let, keep going past them. He said, then the wolf attacks the flock and, 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 and what they do and scatters it. Verse 13. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am. This is what Jesus Christ. He said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I come by to tell you this morning, I'm going to get off my notes a little bit. I come by to tell you this morning, my sisters and brothers, that when we have a relationship with God, we don't want to abandon his sheep. We might get a little tired, a little wore out because we keep trying and trying. I'm talking about the leaders, all of us really. But we, we become more like him because we spend time in his word and we know what thus said the Lord said. We know how good he's been to us so it's rooted and grounded. We don't run away when it gets tough. Jesus here refers to himself as the good shepherd. This will remind Jews of Ezekiel's uh, sketching rebuke through which God had castigated the evil leaders of Israel. I'm giving you some history. I'm just going into what it is. But I like to refer it back to us too, where the Holy Spirit does it. So, 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 uh, this work would, this will remind the Jews of Ezekiel's sketching rebuke, rebuke through which God had castigated the evil leaders uh, of Israel in Ezekiel 34, verse 1 through 6. If you would like to turn there, keep your head, your uh, finger in John, but I'm going to go to Ezekiel 34, verse 1 through 6, where God castigated the evil leaders of Israel. And this is what he said. He said, the word of the Lord came to me. This is Ezekiel. He was called as a prophet uh huh, to prophesy to the ones who had been taken into captivity, Babylonian, Babylonian captivity. Uh huh. And he had reached the age and he was the next, I guess you could say the next one in line to become the priest. But God called him to be a prophet, to prophesy to them, to encourage them. He said, the word, well, let's, let's go on. Verse 34, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. So he called, he goes to, to uh, Ezekiel and he tell, he said, verse two, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. So it was called as a, as a prophet and the Lord is talking to him. He said, woe to you shepherds of Israel who only take care of yourselves. He was letting them know they were selfish. Uh-huh. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? Verse three, you eat the cur curds, clothe yourself with the wool and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or stre a search for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they had, were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. Verse 6, my sheep wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth and no one searched or looked for them. Beloved, Ezekiel called the ex exiles Israel, referring to all of God's people in captivity mm -hmm. from both the northern and southern kingdom, kingdoms. Eze Ezekiel criticized Israel's leaders for taking care of themselves instead of their people. Mm -hmm. He outlined their sins in verses 1 through 6, what we just read, and pronounced judgment upon them. Then he promised that a good and true shepherd, meaning the Messiah, would come. Uh-huh. 
who would care for the people as the other leaders should have done. Uh-huh. He told them that he, that he would search out his people, find them, bring them back home and feed them. Hallelujah. Beloved, this beautiful passage portrays the fate of the present shepherds, the work of the new shepherd, and the future of the sheep. It is evident that immediately God is taking care, taking charge as the good shepherd. Ezekiel 34 verse 11 through 31 is evident of this. And it reads as thus. It said, for this is what the sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them. So will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries. I will bring them to their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravens and in all the settlements in the land. Verse 14, I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their gazing land. There they will lie down in good gazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. You tell me we don't serve the good shepherd, a good God. He is concerned about his sheep. Verse 15, he said, I myself would tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. But the sleek, the sleek and the strong, I will destroy. Woo, God. I will shepherd the flock with just, with, uh, I will shepherd the flock with justice. As for you, my flock, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I would judge between one sheep and another and between rams and goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture, but you also uh, uh, trample the rest of the pasture with your feet? Is it not enough for you to drink clear water? He's asking questions here. Must you also muddy the rest with your feet. Uh-huh. Keep walking with me. Uh, must my flock feed on what you have trampled and drink what you have muddied with your feet. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says to them. He says, see, I myself, talking about a loving father, would judge between the fat sheep. And the lean sheep, uh-huh, because you shove with flank and shoulder, butting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them out. I will save my flock, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place them over one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He would tend them and be their shepherd. The I, the Lord, would be their God. And my servant David would be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Keep walking with me just a little bit longer. I know it's long, but I want you to get the full effect of what I'm talking about. Verse 25, I will make a covenant of peace, hallelujah, with them and rid the land of savage beasts so that they may live in the wilderness and sleep in the forest in safety. Uh-huh. I will make them in the places surrounding my hill a blessing. I will send down showers, uh, uh, showers in season. There will be no showers. There will be showers of blessings. Blessing. The trees will yield their fruit and the ground will yield its crops. The people will be secure in their land. They will know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. When I break the bars of their yoke and rescue them from the hands of those who, who enslaved them. Has God ever rescued you? And where you have felt enslaved, hallelujah, they will no longer be plundered by the nations, nor will wild animals devour them. They will live in safety. Who God, he's a loving God. 
and no will no one will make them afraid. I will provide for them a land we own for its crops. Uh, 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 uh. And they will no longer be victims of famine in the land or bear the scorns of the nation. Then they will know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them. And that they, the Israelites, are my people, declares the sovereign Lord. You are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture. And I am your God, declares the sovereign Lord. Is he your, are you his sheep? Are you determined to be a good sheep? <laughs> Hallelujah. To the good shepherd. Beloved, God promises to take over as shepherd of his scattered flock. When our leaders, listen to me, when our leaders fail us, we must not despair. But but remember that God sees our, sees their shortcomings. He knows our needs and promise to, promises to one day return and forever care for his people. The right way. Mm. Thus, we know that we can always turn to God for help. We can we can commune with God now. We don't have to sacrifice animals in this in this generation. We can go straight to our Father, Amen. And we continue to pray for our leaders. I need your prayers, Pastor Nicole, Bishop Bradshaw, all leaders, Pastor uh, Brendan uh, 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 Chestnut. Y'all need your prayers. We need your prayers. He said, thus we know that we can always turn to God for help because he controls the future. He can transform any tragic situation into good for his kingdom. God is in control of everything. He leads and guides us as leaders. We just be, we got a different calling to bring forth his word. So continue, we should continue to pray for one another. Hallelujah. In addition, verse 18 through 20 of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 34 also makes us aware that a bad shepherd is not only selfish, but destructive. Keep walking with me. A bad minister, it said, muddies the waters for others by causing unnecessary doubt and fear while building their own kingdom. The kingdom of God belongs to who? The one who died and rose again on the third day for us. It's not about us. He gets all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Such a person soft pedals the truth and teaches false ideas at the expense of the gospel. Ezekiel says, whoever does so pollutes the flock's spiritual nourishment. Uh huh. Furthermore, verse 23, I'm breaking down what we just read. Verse, uh, uh, furthermore, verse 23 through 31 of the same chapter. Is saying in contrast to the present evil shepherds, meaning leaders of God's people, God would send a perfect shepherd, hallelujah, the Messiah, hallelujah. He said, my servant David, who would take care of every need his people have and set up a kingdom of perfect peace and justice. Beloved, peace means not only the absence of conflict, but also it says contentment, fulfillment, and security. How many know that the good shepherd, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is, is our security? He is that security blanket, honey. He's everything. He's contentment, he fulfillment, he's security. Jesus clearly identified himself with God by using this title. The good shepherd. Hallelujah. I ask the question again. Are you determined to be a good shepherd? Verse 16. Go back to John. Hallelujah. The book of John. Chapter 10. We have verse 16 now. And it reads as thus. He said, I have other sheep beside these that are not of this fold. I must bring those also, and they will listen to my voice and pay attention to my call. And they will become one flock with one shepherd. What, 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 what does it mean when he say the other sheep? The other sheep that e Ezekiel is speaking about in this passage were non-Jews. Jesus came to Gentiles, people of all nations, as well as Jews. Here, so this is Jesus talking, excuse me, I'm saying Ezekiel, we, hallelujah. Here Jesus provides insight into his worldwide mission. 
which was to die for the sins of the world. That was Jesus. That was his mission. People tend to want to keep God all to themselves, limited to their own group. Uh huh. But Jesus wants us to love and help people beyond the fences we build. If you agree with it, say amen. Uh huh. Yeah, I know we all have our own ministries, but we are unified body. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 17 through 18 of John 10. Jesus goes on to say, for this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life, my own life so that I may take it back. Uh huh. No one takes it away from me, but I lay it down voluntarily. I am authorized and have power to lay it down and to give it up. And I'm, I am authorized and have power to take it back. This command I have received from my father. Beloved, Jesus' death and resurrection as part of God's plan for the salvation of the world were the, under God's full control. No one could kill Jesus without his consent. Hallelujah. Verse 19 through 20 of John 10 reads as follows. It says a division of opinion. Uh -huh. Everybody have an opinion. A division of opinion occurred again among the Jews because of these words of his. Uh huh. How many know when you're bold? Uh huh. And God sent his only begotten son to die for us. And he was a bold, uh, a, a, a servant. Uh huh. A shepherd. Uh huh. It said a division of opinion occurred again among the Jews. God chosen people now because of these words of his. Many of them said, Listen to this. He has a demon and he is a mad. He is a mad insane. He is mad insane. He raves and rambles. Why listen to him? Uh -huh. Others were saying these are not the words and thoughts of one possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Uh-huh. Beloved, if Jesus was merely a man, his claim to be God would have proven, uh, 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 <laughs> oh, God, gee, I tell you, people, stop. God would have, have proven insane, but his miracles wove his words, true meaning. He really is God. The Jewish leaders, beloved, could not see beyond their own pre pro uh, uh, preconceived ideas. And they looked at Jesus only from a, 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 a human perspective. Uh-huh. God is a spiritual God. Whoo, hallelujah. Jesus. Meaning they kept Jesus confined in a human box, but Jesus was not limited by their restricted vision. Woo, God. We have to receive God by faith. We have to receive the Savior by faith. Amen. And we know what faith is. Faith is a substance of things uh, uh, not seen, but the, who help me, Holy Spirit. <laughs> I'm going too fast, y'all. Faith is a substance of things hope for the evidence of things not seen. Help me. Slow down, Pastor. Verses 22 to 23 of John 10. Jesus asserts his deity. And this is what he says. He says, at that time, the feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple area in Solomon's portico. The festival of dedication, beloved, was, was Hanukkah, the festivals of lights. I always like to give history, I tell you. Uh, commemorates the cleansing of the temple after it had been defiled by sacrificing a pig on the altar of burnt offering. The festival is celebrated in the month of December. Furthermore, Solomon's uh, colonnade was a rooted walkway supported by large stone columns just inside the walls of the temple. Uh huh. Verse 24 through 27 goes on to say, so the Jews surrounded him and began saying to him, this is what they said. How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are really the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, tell us so, uh, tell us so plainly and openly. See, they wanted him. They were trying to, uh, uh, trap him up, you know, trip him up rather. 
And, and you see, beloved, many people who were asking for proof did so for wrong reasons. So they were at, they were trying to trip him up. They're asking for wrong reasons. Most of these questions didn't want to, uh, these questioners didn't want to follow Jesus. If it required them to submit to his leadership. Uh huh. They hope that Jesus would declare himself to be the Messiah and then overthrow Rome and restore the prosperity of King David's golden age. They didn't even recognize the Messiah. They also, they, they, uh, along with the disciples and everyone else, uh, in the Jewish nation would have been delighted to have him drive out of Rome. Drive, have him drive out the Romans. Many of them, however, wondered if he had the power to do it. Now, they didn't see the miracles that the Messiah had done, but they still doubted. So these doubters, beloved, hoped Jesus would identify himself so they could accuse him of making false claims to be God, as the, as the Pharisees had done. John 8 verse 13 is evident of this, and it reads as thus. Then the Pharisees told him, you are testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is invalid. I'm, is invalid. The Pharisees thought Jesus was either a lunatic or a liar. Jesus, on the other hand, provides them with a third alternative. This is a third al alternative. He was telling the truth. <laughs> Because most of the Pharisees refused to consider the third alternative, they never recognized him as the Messiah and Lord. Beloved, if you are seeking to know who Jesus is, do not close by uh, 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 any door before looking through it honestly. Uh huh. Only with a mind open to him will you know the truth that he is the Messiah and the Lord. Only with a mind and a heart open to him will you know that he is the Messiah and Lord. Verse 25 through 30, Jesus responds and it reads as thus. He responds to them, to the Jews. He says this, Jesus answered them, I have told you so, yet you do not believe. Remember, I told you to hear the word believe quite a bit in the beginning when I started out. He said, I have told you so, yet you do not believe. The works that I do in my father's name testify concerning me. They are my credentials and the evidence declaring who I am. Verse 26, but you do not believe me. So, so you do not trust and follow me because you are not my sheep. The sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and they will never, ever by any means perish and no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. My sisters and brothers, the simple statement, my sheep hear my voice and pack, is, is packed full of Christian doctrine. Doctrine is teaching. It expresses personal intimacy. Between the shepherd and his sheep, Jesus said here, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. John 10 verse 14, knowing the Lord's voice indicates, beloved, exper experiment, whoo, hallelujah, experimental knowledge, meaning that you have experienced some things through a relationship with him. My sheep hear my voice also highlights the call of Jesus Christ that brings believers into a new abundant life of fellowship with him. According to Romans 8, 28 through 30, Jesus as the good shepherd calls uh, us by name. Hallelujah. John 10 verse 3 is evident of this. And it reads as that the doorkeeper opens the gate for this man and the sheep hear his voice and pay close attention to it. And knowing that they listen, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out to the pasture. We are made aware here that Jesus, sheep, Jesus is sheep, recognize his voice.
A person's voice conveys more than words. It conveys con intent. Sometimes it speaks warmth, comfort, and encouragement. Sometimes it provides a warning. Hallelujah. Ancient Middle Eastern shepherds were, no were known for calling each of their sheep by name. And each sheep will respond to his own name. When we read Jesus, Jesus' words in the Gospels, we must listen for the caring shepherd behind them. Jesus knows your name. Hear his call, beloved. Don't be too busy. Just listen to the good shepherd when he taps you on the shoulder. If he's warning you not to go to the left or not to go to the right, keep looking to the, to the hills will come at your help, knowing that your help coming from the Lord. Hear his call. Furthermore, furthermore, my sheep hear my voice. Speaks of those who listen with obedient attention. This kind of listening results in faith. Paul taught the Romans. Faith comes by from hearing the message. The message is heard through the word about Christ. Romans 10 verse 17. Beloved, one primary way we hear the Lord's voice is through the word of God. By hearing his voice in scripture, we get to know him. And knowing him produces faith. And that faith causes us to follow him and obey him. First John 2 verse 3 and 6 explains that to know God is to obey him. Hallelujah. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says this is what first John 2 verse 3 through 6 says. Whoever says I know him but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. But if it, but if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. True sheep know the Lord's voice and prove it by obeying his command. They live as Jesus did. Jesus goes on to say in verse 28 through 30 of John 10, he says this, beloved, I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Verse 29, my father who has given them to me is greater than all, hallelujah, and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. I and the father are one. See, that's what the Jews couldn't accept. Him, They called him blasphemers, his own people. That's why we got to be, be determined to be good sheep, rooted and grounded in his word. So when he touches, when he talks to her, we know it's from the good shepherd. Hallelujah. Beloved, those who belong to the good shepherd belong to God the Father. They are his forever. This is what it says, meaning eternal, eternally. Jesus laid down his life on the cross to give his followers eternal life. And they are safe in his sheepfold for all eternity. The question I have for you, are you Jesus' sheep? And if so, are you determined to be a good sheep? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I pray that after listening to this message today, that you are compelled to be a good sheep and be all that God will have you to be. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is a good God. He is a faithful God. He is a good shepherd. He is who God, who God, thank you God. There is no one like him. We serve a mighty God. 
Prince of Peace, Abba Father, he is the good shepherd. Be determined to be a good sheep. And in order to be that good sheep, you must first know him. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 9 and 10. He said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Do you believe? If you don't know, if you're not sure, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. After listening to this message, I want to know that I know that I know the good shepherd. <laughs> he said, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. I believe, I confess with my mouth that Jesus, that God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for me. But on the third day, he rose again. I believe it. I confess and I believe with my heart and begin to just walk it out by faith. Get connected to a Bible, believing, teaching ministry and begin to mature in the things of God. Welcome into the family of God. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you've been on this journey a while and the pressures of life has gotten the best of you, you can come back today. You still have breath in your body. Acts 3 verse, uh, oh God. Got to calm down a little bit. Just got excited about the things of God, I tell you. Acts 3 verse 19 said, repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And he promised that a time of refreshing will come from the Lord. Say, Lord God, Lord Jesus, I repent. I come to you with a sorrowful heart, asking you to forgive me, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Welcome back into the family of God. Amen. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I just thank God for Sister Rita. Oh, welcome, Rita. How are you doing? It's so good to see you. Nicole Bradshaw, Pastor Nicole Bradshaw, Deacon Annie Fields, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Um. For all, let's see, Miss Sister Kelly Richardson, thank you for tuning in. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I love you all. Love you all. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I give him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Thank you so much for tuning in. I pray that you have enjoyed the word of God. I tell you, I did. Studying that word. And you know, sometimes I go back and forth with God, like he, you like, he doesn't know. He knows all things because he tells me to just read and I want to cut it short, but I have to go ahead and give you the fullness, the full effect, you know, of how much God loves us. The good shepherd, shepherd loved us. He laid down his life for us and he wants us to become more like him. And we deal with certain things in this life, but he can identify because God sent him here to earth in flesh. Let's wrap them up in fleshly form because we are spirit. When I when I when we die, our spirit goes somewhere. It's gonna go to heaven or hell, whether you want to believe it or not. It is. And we want to identify with Christ. And we will. And we stay connected to the word. Our minds will be renewed through the word of God, and we become more like him. And we become the, the a good shepherd, even the more. And we want to, we don't want to see anyone go without. We want to love on them. Now, God will give you wisdom. He is the, he is wisdom. And he will give you wisdom what to do and what not to do. God knows. He, he is the creator. He created us. So he'll never leave us or forsake us. And he knows our hearts. He knows. He knows all, he knows what we're going to do before we do it. But he said he wouldn't allow us to be tempted above them. What it says above. Help me, Holy Spirit. In other words, we will come out of it. We won't go for it unless we just want to do what we want to do. And you know, this flesh, as I always say, this flesh is a mess. It wants to do what it wants to do, how it wants to do, when it wants to do it. But as we stay connected to God, the Holy Spirit will put an unction in our spirit. Don't say that, Pastor Solomon. And I'll use my name. Don't, don't say that. Don't do that. He will do it. Even when, you know, when we're married, you can tell, don't say that. You know, that's going to cause our, he, he, when we're in relationship with him, he will do it. He is, he is something else. 
God is, he's, he knows all things. He loves you. He loves me. He is a faithful God. Love you too. I love you so much. Thank you for saying that. I need that too. I need to know that I'm loved. I don't know about you. You say, I, I don't have to. I don't have to have. Yes, I do. I want to know I'm loved. I love you. To God be the glory. I want to ask you to check out my YouTube page. I came up on, I can go live now through YouTube, but I came on up through Facebook because I'm still trying to get the kinks out. I, I'm doing it all right now. So, uh, just trying to make sure I'm editing everything right and have a nice picture come up and this, that, and other. So I told one of the brothers this morning, I said, I'm not going to come up because he's always here. And I told him, I said, I'm not going to come up through uh, YouTube today, but I can go live now, thank God. But I want to make sure I get all the kinks out and be able to present it very well and continue to pray with me. If God wants us to go back into the church, we will. Uh, and some is saying, you know, they'll be there, but right now I'm doing everything, you know, and it's all good. It's all right. Because, you know, uh, someone called me the other day and they said, pastor, you are very consistent and persistent. Well, if you believe that God has called you to do a thing, then you, you are, you know, he gives you the strength to do it. You know, some challenges will come. It's not always easy all the time, but we know him as the good shepherd and he's going to lead and guide us and direct our path. And I just thank God for a relationship with him because he gives you peace. He gives you joy. Um, I mean, he's just wonderful. You don't want to do anything that's not pleasing to God. You want to please God. And that means the way you treat people, the way you do, the way you handle people, he would teach you all that. God is good. And if they still want to be um, negative towards you, then you have to shake the dust off your feet and go on because you know that you know that you've done all you can do. I don't know why I said that, but he knows. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to study your word with your people. Lead God in order our steps here at a journey into wholeness, cathedral worldwide ministries, what you will have us to do. Lord, continue to bless faith zone and the, the pastor and the bishop, my bishop and pastor there. Continue to move in a mighty way. Look over brother, uh, Gail, uh, brother, uh, Will, Will, Will and sister Gail Brown. Bless them and keep them as you use them for your, for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for your mercy and your grace that you bestow on us every morning, new every morning. Lord, we thank you for knowing you as the good shepherd. There is no one like you, Father. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You be blessed, my sister. Be blessed, my brother. Until Tuesday night, 730, I'll be right here, ready to study the word of God with you. Have a blessed rest of the week.